findings by the National Bureau of Statistics indicate that the Nigerian economy maintained a strong growth trend in the first and second quarter of 2018 when compared to the year 2017. Now, the new level, which represents an increase of about 2.87 percent points, with real GDP growth still going at minus 13.4 percent, experts say this still aligns with the growth trajectory since the economy recovered from its worst recession in the country's history in the second quarter of 2017. Now, the recovery is mainly attributed to the federal government's diversification drive, growth in agriculture, telecommunications and services. Most recently, a globally recognized and respected research firm, Forbes Africa, named Nigeria as the best economy in Africa, topping the list with $172 billion and closely followed by South Africa, at second with $166.735 billion. While Egypt is ranked third with $78 billion. Now, the pertinent question is, what is the implication of this ranking on the common man in Nigeria? And what are the indices that placed Nigeria at the top of that ranking? On this edition of Nigeria Today, we're focusing on Nigeria's ranking as best economy in Africa by Forbes Africa. Welcome to the program. I am Joy Usiago. <music> The program is Nigeria Today, and with me in the studio to take a critical look at the topic is Ogbonna Ukuku. He's an investment promotion expert. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Also in the studio is Aliu Abdullahi, a lawyer and a policy analyst. Thanks for joining us, Aliu. Thank you for having me. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this evening. This is quite interesting when we came across the news today we said oh this is really wonderful and interesting we should get some analysts who can explain the figures and why we are at the top to us and the implications for Nigeria so some analysts have however queried this ranking some of them are of the opinion that no how can Nigeria be at the top now? But of course, we decided to talk to those who know to explain to us better. So, Obuna, let's start with you. Um, okay, let me, let, let, me, let me put it this way. There are four major things that motivate investors into a particular economy. First is the natural resources that exist there. Number two, the market size, which is also the large population that you have that you can convert to your market size. Okay. Now, number, number four, is actually um, the, 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 the economic parameters that you have put in place, the efficiency in the system, and then the work you are doing towards increasing your, your tax regime, the reforms that you are doing within your justice system, your property rights, and all of that. Then the fourth one, which is the most critical one, is the, 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 the strategic asset acquisition, mm -hmm. or the availability of assets that people can actually acquire. Let me start from the last one, because if you look at the last one, you see that we have huge assets, strategic assets, that federal government have invested in, mm -hmm. like the railways. As you're investing in these railways, people from outside, investors are looking at how do we come in and take advantage, because at the end of the day, government will not be able to run those entities. Mm -hmm. So private sector will come in to run those entities at the end of the day. So if you're comparing those kind of assets, there are so much of them, the, the refineries that are still not working. These are areas that people want to come and invest in. So if you look at it from the first thing I mentioned to the fourth thing, you will see that the economy is where everybody will want to come to. If, if compared with South Africa that has just entered recession, if you look at, if you look at the, the South African economy very well, you will see that it's a bit saturated mm. because that we don't have inf you know, enough infrastructure is an appetite for an investor who wants to do business in infrastructure. That we have not done enough mechanization in agriculture and we're looking at diversifying the economy. Also create an opportunity for people to want to come and do business. So most of these other economies like Angola, Egypt, these are economies that are already saturated. If you put $500 billion in, in Egypt today, it will not sit in because there are no more, a lot of investment opportunities that you can put the money in. But if it comes to Nigeria, 
there's so much that you can go into. And then again, another thing you must critically look at is the fact that the risks, the, 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 the return on investment actually outweighs the risk because the risk is something that can be covered with insurance, that can be covered with multilateral agencies like MIGA. So, but on the other hand, if you have huge return on investment, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a huge appetite for every investor that wants to do business. So I understand I, where Forbes is coming from. I guess that, that perhaps explains what um, an investor, I was on board a flight to Nigeria with a foreign investor, and I was saying to him, are you not afraid of the stories you hear in Nigeria? He said something very important to me. He said, those stories are a distraction from my vision. This is the time to yeah. go to Nigeria and a white a white person, a yeah. Caucasian. Yeah, so good. that tells me that there's something going on here oh, in Nigeria. Good. That leads me to Aliyu. Yeah. What exactly is this administration doing differently um, that is attracting more investors into the country? Well, thank you, Joy. Uh, <clears throat> well, apart from attracting uh, more investments, uh, uh, Ogwana ha act has actually captured that area of investment. We are also talking about the economy back home here. Mm -hmm. You know, why, how is it growing? The GDP that we're actually, uh, that the force is basing the report on is the total, you know, earnings, you know, in the country uh, over a given period of time. Mm -hmm. So now we look at what the government is doing. What are they getting right? There is, you know, the economic recovery and growth plan. It's a, com a very holistic and comprehensive uh, document on economy plans, and it takes care of almost every sector of the economy. How do I mean? When you are actually trying to have an economic plan, you will think of the people at the lowest, you would think of the people in the middle class. You would think of the people at the high end. And that's what this government do, did and is still actually doing. You will notice of recent, I mean, the most recent uh, economic plan that is coming into fruition is the money, is the trader money or money trader that is recently launched in about uh, nine states and is going to go throughout the 36 states. It caters for the lowest you know you know the down the, the, uh, i don't want to even say down trading but the lowest in the economic uh chain that that is a loan that is not collateralized you don't need to secure it by collateral that will be given to these petty traders mm -hmm. about 20 million nigerians are going to benefit from that and by the time they actually make repayment they will from that 10,000, they will graduate to 50,000. Then we have many schemes. I don't want to even go to the SIP because that, that will be social investment pro programs and projects. But then again, you look at the recent also CBN's uh, policy to commercial banks that when they lend to, do, to these two sectors, manufacturing sector and agricultural sector, they will have a reduced, a reduced CRR cash reserve ratio with the CVN. And the cash reserve ratio normally strangles the commercial banks because it's, some, it's a requirement that they have to fulfill. But now, when they show evidence that I am lending to these particular sectors, manufacturing and agriculture, the CVN will reduce yeah, uh, a percentage of CRF that you have to keep. And now, that is very important because an economy will not develop without developing your yeah, manufacturing sector. That's the real sector. What we have been doing over the time before, you know, is concentrating on the, serv uh, on the service sector. And you see, as an economy, if you, don't if you don't actually develop your manufacturing sector, you cannot really develop your economy. And this is why what he's saying cor actually correlates with what I'm saying. Mm. The development, massive development in the infrastructures that we're seeing, you know, he talks about railway that is actually being worked on. Now we have also the Ajakuta steel that is that will soon come in. Now imagine the steel that will be coming out from Ajakuta steel company. Then imagine all the rail growth, you know, construction that will be going on, and yeah. we just move to we just go to Ajakuta and get this steel. We were talking about unemployment reducing and unemployment rate, <laughs> and don't forget. 
and our inflation on the other hand is has been dropping consistently for almost I think 11 months so oh, far yeah. and that is really good all these coming together I think it, it's good for the ERGP and also uh, I think it's good news for Nigerians uh, Ali if I allow you you go on and on <laughs> with some of these achievements we'll talk we'll talk about let me go quickly to uh, Obunna you know he he talked about the economic plan of the federal government and I, I i want to find out from you some of this from what he's saying i get the impression that some of these policies have this bottom to the top approach do you agree with that yeah i i have seen i've seen that happen a couple of times but it's just that sometimes there's always this um for things to move from from that level okay you do a policy from the top and it has to go it has to trickle down now, the, uh, the problem we always have most of the time is how you get the states to adopt some of these programs. It will take the states a lot of time to understand what the program really will be or what, wants, you know, what, what we want to achieve with some of these programs. So I, I, I agree with that, but I still think that a lot needs to be done in the area of getting the state governors to you know, to, to be part of what exactly, the programs are. Yeah, I was going to ask how are the sub-nationals keen into this development at the federal level? It's, 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 it's quite, sometimes, you know, it's quite slow because most of them, they, they already have their own agenda because, I mean, because we don't, the federal doesn't have control over the states and some of them already have their set goals. So whatever the federal government is bringing to them sometimes look very new to them. So we have to find a way to you know, get them to understand that it's for your own good. Because, for example, if you want to attract investment now, there is no investment that's going to be in Nassau Rock. It's going to be in a state. It has to be but domiciled in a state. The chief executive of a state have a vision that he can run with, and if that kind of vision aligns with what the federal government is doing, shouldn't that be easy? It, it should be easy, but like I said, sometimes, you know, you don't find it so, you know, because you can find states like Ogun State, they are always very easy, they, they know how to embrace anything they hear that the federal government is doing, mm -hmm. they quickly rush to take advantage of it. Uh, you know, the Lagos, Lagos State is the usual suspect, they know how to take advantage of such opportunities, but any which way, it will still come, things will come to Lagos State naturally. Mm -hmm. But there are still some states, KB State have done so much, you know, in the area of trying to take advantage of the Anchor Borrowers Program to make sure that we increase our production. Uh, you know, uh, you know, our production when it comes to rice. So these are the things I expect other states to take advantage of. Because I mean, if Kogi State, for example, is the highest producer of cassava in Nigeria, we don't export. We don't have so much. They, they don't make. They don't have so much revenue from cassava in Kogi State. So there are the things that the, the the young governor there should take advantage of and say, okay, let let me see how the Anchor Boras program will work for my people, so that we can produce cassava and start exporting cassava starch out of Kogi state. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of things we're talking about. The states being able, you know, the ability of the, st the state CEOs being able to, you know, apprehend what the plans are and then, you know, take advantage of them quickly. I see Ali is itching to add to this. So let's hear from you before we go on a short break. Okay, well, I think um, I, I agree with your question. How does it uh, actually, how will the states actually key in? And I think the thing is this. The states, there is what we call in the in economy, comparative and competitive advantage. So each state has to look inward first and find out what's my own comparative and competitive advantage against the other state and so on. What will work with, for Lagos will not work may not work but, for, but for KB. Sorry, hey, got you sure. The challenge is that some hmm. executives, some 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 leaders of this state are not I have a feeling that they don't even seem to understand the picture of where the federal government is going. Actually, uh, I think they do. It's just like, no, a, uh, I mean, synchronizing and actually a, a cohesion, bringing your own agenda, your own plan based on your own comparative advantage to align with the federal government's own. I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah. He already has mentioned quite a few. There is the rice and coal borough fund from the CB, from the CBN from the federal government. KB and few others said Adamawa, Kano, they know that their comparative advantage is in farming agriculture because they have the land and they have the people, right? Lagos can't do that because Lagos don't have the land, but they have the waters. So what they did, Lagos, 
is tax. You know, they tax companies that do business in Lagos. Mm. So, you see, they take advantage. Lagos will take advantage of the bids. The bid system, you know, that the federal, uh, uh, the FRS is actually improving on. The government, the federal government is trying to improve uh, tax returns and also the sanitization, the port reforms in the maritime sector, you know, that will help states like Lagos, the coastal states, Lagos, Port Alcott, Calabar, Delta. So now they will take advantage of those economic policies that pertain to their economic comparative advantages. While those states that actually have to rely on farming, they will take all the advantages that has to do with various schemes in agriculture. We have many of those in CVN, Bank of Agriculture. In fact, there is a new body, you know, NIRSAL, that actually NIRSAL is a body that uh, hedge the risks for banks so that they can lend to the agricultural sectors without the fear that the loan will become non-performing. All right, Ali, uh, gentlemen, let's take a short break. Uh, when we return, we'll continue with our discussion. The Nigerian Television Authority, News 24 Channel, your dependable all-round news station, offering you world-class news programs, documentaries, spotlights, promos, and information highlights. Take advantage of our network reach and advertise your interest, goods, and services with us. MTA News 24, first equals with digital broadcasting. You can reach us on Channel 21 Terrestrial TV and Channel 101 on the Star Times platform. For more inquiries, please call hand on 0803-379-0884. Join us today. Thank you for staying with us. The program is still Nigeria today, and I still have my guests in the studio, Ubuna Ukuku, an investment promotion expert. Also in the studio is Aliu Abdullahi, a lawyer and a policy analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with us. Let me go to you, uh, Ubuna. You know, the common man hearing this report from Forbes Africa, the first question that comes to mind is, I cannot have three square meals. How do you explain this ranking to the ordinary Nigerian? It's as simple as telling every, every person that is out there. Um, things don't just happen overnight, okay? When, when perception like this comes, it's to encourage investors to do business within your locality. Now, everybody should be a bit patient it will trickle down eventually because it won't stay up there forever. Really, in the next couple of years, when these transactions will begin to mature, you will begin to see things happen, employment will be generated, you know, our livelihood will, you know, things will change definitely. So I understand when people say, yes, we're hungry, but I mean, every person, every country that you see today that have developed, that have moved from zero to hero, they actually, there was, they, they, there was some sacrifice they, that they made as a country. You know, sometimes we try to compare ourselves with China. And I tell people sometimes, you know, there was a time that China, the entire China, I can imagine over 800 million people mm -hmm. dressing like Oshomole. You know, the way Adam Oshomole dresses. That's how everybody in China used to dress. Simple. It, sim as simple as that, they all used to wear things looking like that, male, female. And for over, over, for over 10 years, mm -hmm. they shut their borders. They were able to sit down plan themselves. It's not as if they didn't see the Louis Vuittons, they didn't see the, the, the Juventus and all of that. Those things were there. They were able to curb their appetite. And they to, still do that wherever they move to. I notice in, in a community, they yeah, stay they, together and make sure they grow. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what happens to you when you try to get a people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to someone a few minutes ago. I think the problem we have is that we expect people to do the right thing. Man was designed not to do the right things, but you make people do the right things. Who That's two different things. That's <laughs> how the way, the way man was made was just man was designed to break laws. But what you do is that you create systems that will make man not to break laws. Okay? You design things that will make man to stay in line with plan and purpose. So that's how even God that created us gave us the holy book, the Bible, so that everybody can read and see what the instructions are. If you do this, this is what will happen to you. Mm -hmm. So by the time we begin to see that, if we align ourselves with the right things, which is building structures, right. have deep thinkers who will run systems, before you know it, everybody will be better for it. 
we have we have we have we have deposits of gold that we have not even started tapping into. We have me, we have solid minerals that we've not even touched. My, I still tell people, do you know as simple as small as Tom Tom, the 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 candy? Mm -hmm. I tell people that Tom Tom is important. They used to argue with me. I say no. Let me explain it to you. The composition of Tom 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 is made up of three things: glucose syrup, which comes from cassava or corn, and um, uh, uh, the, the the coloration and flavoring. Those three things make up what you leak, what, what people buy and leak. And do, they pro do they produce those things in Nigeria? No. no. And we you have the components. We, 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 import, we import, we get our glucose syrup from Brazil or Turkey or China. We get the coloration from Turkey and sometimes US. And then the, the flavoring we also import. So at the end of the day, what we do here is we actually, we actually assemble Tom Tom. So I still, I still think that everybody should give this administration a chance because from the ERGP, you can see that we all work for the first time. You can even see that everybody understands that we can't pay lip service anymore to diversification. Mm -hmm. And it has started yielding results. Mm -hmm. So let's give them a chance. Let them see this particular thing through. And I know with time, everybody will begin to smile. All right, Ali, you know, Obuna raised an important, he touched on a very vital issue, which I also believe in. It's about having a structure. Because when you have a structure, even when the one who created it is not there, it is able to run itself without any, with different kinds of leadership. How vital is uh, the issue of creating structure? Because I see this current administration doing that. And when you're creating structure, uh, I mean, it's hard for the people, but they need to be patient, like Obona said. Um, well, I, I, I agree. Uh, whether we call it a uh, structure, whether we call it system, whether we call it strong institutions and policies, uh, this, is, that's, this is really good. Like the ERGP, for example, it's a, a three-year plan. It's not, uh, it takes care of uh, the short and also medium and long-term plan. So you are right. Uh, that leads to the question of sustainability. How sustainable will the policies that we are talking about that have been commenced, uh, how, how sustainable are they? They are sustainable. It depends on, uh, first, one, I think, if uh, Nigerians start seeing results of these uh, processes, these systems that are in place, uh, and also, perhaps, maybe, if this government or whatever government at the end of the day uh, continues, will see the good things. Because one thing with Nigeria, we'd like changing our plans. It's good, yes. Sometimes you, even in, within your own government, you can review something and then find out if there is something that is not working well. You change it, you amend it, you move. But despite that, you know, it's not good when something is working, then you discard it. You continue. Continuity is very important if we want to become something. Like the China, for example, he's given ex he gave example of. Uh, 40 years back, you know, China was a closed economy. And one thing they found out, they cannot live in isolation. They actually did something. They had a reform, an economic reform. Part of that economic reform is opening up. Because, as like I told you, from a closed economy to an open door economy, and they had plans a longer period of time plans spanning over a, per a period of 40 so, so, years. So, Ali, because time is not on our side. In mm. a nutshell, what you're saying is China eventually opened up. Yes. And what I'm saying is continuity of policies of those structures you mentioned is essential. Okay. So we have a choice as people, like I said. All the discussion me and Agbona were having or with you mm -hmm. that we had that lead to for recognizing Nigeria as the best economy is whether we are happy with that, we are happy with what the government is doing. If we are, then we try to make sure that this policies and this system continues Continuity. so that at least yes continues so exactly like so that we can up. be better cool. and also like i said in this nigerian economy there is something for you there is something for me thank you for the big man and for the small thank man i want to, uh, to add one last word before we go because our time is over and if you can just you know keep it very short for me so in the next five to ten years do you see us maintaining uh, our position in terms of this ranking as the best economy? Yes. Of course, yes. 
We're going to be we're, we're, still, we're going to be competing with other economies in the world because whether we like it or not, like I mentioned in my in my opening, mm. that the kind of natural resources we have, a lot of countries don't have. We're going to take advantage of it with the diversification program that is going on, you know, and the fast, inf you know, the, the huge infrastructure development that is coming into Nigeria. I know that this country will be good for it in the next couple of years. I am also optimistic. I want to thank you very much, Ubuna Ukuku, investment promotion expert. Thank you very much for joining us this thank evening. Thank you very much. And I also want to thank Aliu Abdullahi, who is a lawyer and a policy analyst. Thank you very much. You're welcome, for and thank you for having me. Evening. And to you out there, we thank you for staying tuned. Join us tomorrow for more insightful discussions on the program. Remember, Nigeria Today is on weekdays at the same time. You can also watch any edition online at www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24. My name is Joy Yusiago. Enjoy the rest of your evening.